we all know this is art. We all begrudgingly confirm that this is art. But is this art? This time it's not just a discussion. It's the great game again, debate! These are art. Or are they? This might get hairy, folks. And ever so slightly silly. Hello, everyone, and welcome to BadgerPod Nerdcast number 26. No, but no, it's BadgerPod Gamergate number it's, five. It's both. It's sort of both. I put Nerdcast 26 because it's Monday. But I'm calling right. it the Great Gamergate Debate. All right, all right. It's, it's all things and no things at on once. On ice. Uh, um, just like art. Attention, beta, beta, tefa. <laughs> um, we're going to be it's sort of a special show we're going to be having a big discussion about games as art and uh, whether or not this is a viable or uh, well inviable is that a word um, sort of you know way to describe them and what the consequences of that kind of thinking is the goal of this debate is to really to have the discussion uh, and, and try to get to some uh, you know, discover the truth, not necessarily to win, you know, at all costs and like um, drink people's blood and shit. That, that's for after the show. Um, so I'm going to introduce the people that we have on. First, we have, uh, for arguing in favor of uh, games as art, we have Allison Tiemann. And um, arguing in, against the idea of games as art is Sour Grape. Um, the sister from another, I don't know. Sister from another sister. mister? My sister from another <laughs> mister, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just going to play devil's advocate, or be the devil, depending on what you're thinking. Um, I'm going to say games at this point in time are not art. And not that they can't ever be, but at this point in time, they can, they are not. So... The, uh, then we have just like the two sort of spectators that will participate in the discussion once the debate portion is over. Um, we have Dr. Randomer Cam, uh, and I am uh, Brian Martinez. I'm hosting the call, and uh, I will listen to both sides and try to be as objective and clear-headed as possible and not allow my biases to immediately cloud the issue. We're um, going to allow Sauer to present her half of the argument for games not as art, and then Allison will present her half uh, for games as art, and then we'll just sort of start talking. Okay, so Sour, go first. All right. Um, are video games specifically art? I've heard many of my fellow gamers, even in the chat out there, say games are art. And I ask them why, and it starts and ends with the same phrase. Why not? Everything else is art. From movies to books to paintings, these mediums have all crossed the hurdles of claiming that they are art. Have video games or have the video game community done this? I would say no. They have yet to leap successfully over three major hurdles and in many cases just crashed into them. To preface, and we have to preface this, uh, games when compared to other mediums, is it's relatively new and most people who play games are young and we grew up with the philosophic principle that definitions and their corresponding principles are irrelevant. And most things we consider relative because it's easier to do it that way to be honest so a warning to anyone who believes in relative definitions you are not going to agree with what I have to say um, first hurdle we have never jumped over or I didn't get a memo of if we're gonna claim that games are art what is a video game we need a definition that is specific that is clear that is concise and that is agreed upon now, when I was trying to figure out what a video game was, I went through about four different areas. The graphics, the artwork, the environment, that's all one. Sound, music, voice acting. I went through uh, narrative or dialogue. And then the final piece, which is mechanics and rules. Now, the reason why I don't say video games are art is because it's mostly the mechanics that we focus on. What would happen if the mechanics were taken out of that set and we single that out specifically, which it is the game. It, it wouldn't be art. We don't call a spreadsheet art. We don't call mechanics or rules art. Mechanics are the most important component to making a game and by itself it isn't art. 
Now there might be aspects of art within this amalgamation we call video games, but the game itself isn't art. The second hurdle we haven't jumped through is if, if we're going to call games art, are some games more art than others? How are we going to define art as it specifically pertains to video games? Because video games are a very new and very different medium. And then we go into um, something that social justice warriors were trying to do, which is define what if, in, if uh, video games are art. And they came up with a definition. They came up with art game, which is different than video game art, which is something that people usually mistake the two. Um, Another hurdle, the last hurdle we haven't crossed at all, if we're going to say video games are art, how are we going to deal with the art of game creation? Art is something that most people say it would consider is produced through artistry. And is it, it, it we're basically going to have to make it very clear that if you're making this game and it's going to be considered art, your, the creation of it is also going to have to have some skill attached to it. And to be quite frank, many indie games are not going to fall into the category of art. The skill that is produced, or many even AAA games are not going to be considered art. The skill that is acquired or that's going to go into the game is going to be as important, if not mostly important, to its definition or what category it's going to be put in. Um, but basically my overall question is this, why would we even want to declare from the mountaintops as gamers, video games are art, why does it even matter, or how would this even affect the medium dr dr drastically at all? I highly doubt anyone would even notice the next day, or that it would even affect anything in the gaming sphere at all. Um, Again, gaming medium is an, it's a different entity, and if we are going to call it art, I think we should formulate our own definition, not based upon other uh, basic concepts of, of art. Why are we using sculpture, the art of sculpture, to define the art of games? Um, another thing to consider when, when uh, thinking about this topic, I thought about early access. I thought about microtransactions. I thought about modifications. Are we going to consider me getting an early glimpse into a game? Is that is that art? Is that finished art? Is that ready? I don't know how to define that. Um, even, but go on. I I think I'll stop there because that's that's a lot. Okay, so I would like to address your first major hurdle, which I All said right. was our probably our greatest point of uh, of of discontent perhaps or not or uh, of uh, disagreement uh you said that games need a definition that's specific concise and agreed upon and you identified mechanics or gameplay as the most important part of the game you can take away the artistry you can take away the sound but if you don't have good gameplay nobody's going to be interested in your game well or even rules more specifically winner I, loser, that kind of thing i would argue that you say that mechanics are not art, or gameplay is not art. Yes. I would argue that it is. I would argue that the process of developing a gameplay that is compelling and intriguing and engrossing and pulls people into it and interacting with a space that may not even be uh, beautiful, but because of the mechanics, because of the way you can interact with it, I mean, look at Minecraft, because of the way you can interact with it, it lends itself, the interaction itself lends itself to creating a, a, a beauty as you interact with the space. And I would say that the process of creating the, those mechanics and establishing how the world that you've created interacts with the player is art. It's not an art that you can see. Uh, it's not an art that you can, I guess, smell or taste, or it's not an art that you can, uh, uh, can hear, but it is an art that you can feel. But I have two points to that. Uh, I was just wondering, are you talking about the uh, – the only reason I have contention with that is because if you just took that away, if you just took the mechanics of Minecraft and even took away the art, the sound, e e everything, and you just take the mechanics, though, is that going to be considered art? Because everything else on its own is art. Why okay, but... specifically the mechanics, though? I'm not arguing 
I'm not arguing that this other stuff is or is not art. I'm saying the mechanics itself are art. Now, you may need to use other forms of art to make the mechanics accessible to people. Just like um, you know, you can have an orchestra and uh, playing with with a with a opera, and you have actors, so you have performance art, and you have music, and then you have stage direction. So you you use all of that to to create a performance piece, and you can use visual art, you can use sound to make the mechanics accessible to people and to to increase their scope. But like you said, it all comes down to the mechanics, and the mechanics are how those 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 um, creations that you've made in the world, how you've, you've, the world that you've created, how it interacts with the player, and that itself can be art. How you, how you determine how the player interacts with the world. And I think that the process of developing that is a form of artistry. It's so hard to separate the two. It's so hard to separate the components. But when you do, that, that's what I'm left with. Also, uh, well, the, the and reality are, is, are graphical user interfaces art then too? Just because we have a limitation in technology doesn't mean in the future we won't actually be able to directly interact with the mechanics without visual um, stand-ins or uh, auditory stand-ins or this, these kinds of um, the interactive world experience, essentially. There may be a point where we are able to di to actually divorce that process of creating the mechanics of interaction from creating uh, a world that we identify with. I think that the lim you can't look at the limitations of technology. We're, we're sitting in a situation where this is this. I, what I can say is this is a limitation of technology. I believe that you can take what what people are using to develop the, these these gameplays, the, the the beauty of the gameplay and divorce it from any relation to what we see or what we feel, or not, not what we feel, but what we see and hear in our environment and actually create a form of art that we don't know, we're not really experiencing just yet. But I think that's a long discussion and a long explanation. So I think that yeah, it's a great point, Sour, but I think that what we're looking at is a limitation of technology and that we will eventually develop, uh, further develop this medium that I hope that that's the case. Are, that games are art within, yeah. and uh, and it, it will be it will become clearer and clearer, you know, that this is this is an artistic medium, and it's also why I totally and utterly reject the social justice warrior definition of art game. It's it's it, 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 they want to put the boundary breaking at political, well, not even breaking any political boundaries, but regurgitating their 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 ideology. Um, that should be the boundary that 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 games push in order to be a, a human expression. I think the boundary that games push in order to be a human expression is that they are an expression in a medium that we are starting to master technologically. We mastered the visual medium technologically. We mastered the sound medium technologically. I guess we mastered the gustatory medium as well. Um, but we have yet to master as a form of expression, uh, a form of human communication, the medium encompassed by, I'm gonna use a really big buzzword, the haptic sense. The haptic sense includes not just the physical sense of touch, but also the sense of where your body is in space. And when that is the boundary that games are really pushing, and it's a boundary of human expression. So I would liken games to, as they are now, are like cave paintings. And if you can imagine all of our primitive, not primitive, but our older, our ancestors gathered around this illusion on the wall, of a creature that doesn't really exist, but sort of does exist, and theorizing on what 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 this could mean. Um, at that time, they don't even know the medium that that this this painting is within, and they couldn't possibly know everything that would come out of mastering that medium, which is not just uh, not just cave paintings, but also eventually written language, and phonetic written language, and mathematics and agriculture and um, uh, empires, um, systems of governments that span the entire world. This is all predicated on mastering the visual medium. Games are those primitive cave paintings. So the one question that, that sort of uh, that stuck in my mind when you said was Pong is no longer really art because we can all do it. 
Well, are those cave paintings art? Because, well, they were sort of primitive. If I, cre if I compare the process of creating a game mechanic or gameplay to the process of, for example, doing illustration, there is, there is a process where you're taking something vague and you're refining it and refining it and refining it and refining it and refining it. Same with illustration. You're taking something, you're taking a thought, and you're just slowly applying layer after layer after layer of refinement, which is that artistic process that you were talking about, Sour. And then eventually you get something that is uh, compelling. And so I would say that the, 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 the gameplay, the gameplay mechanics, the whole process of figuring out how to make them work is a form of artistry. It's just not a form of artistry in a medium that we have completely understood as art. Would you consider a twine game a game? Was, is there anything in there? Are there any choices that people make? Is there any, is there any sense of, uh, of uh, the, touching the game world and making it change in, in that, that particular so-called game? Well, I would say that about any game, actually. I mean, the, the only game that I enjoyed actually dealing with choices was Bioshock, and even then choices are predetermined for you there is no but there still is a sense of consequence so in the game depression is it was it depression quest it was depression quest and the other twine games are sort of along those lines but those are almost like choose your own adventure kind of thing yeah but this, but the thing is that in a game if you make a choice and there's a consequence you don't necessarily you can't necessarily go back and make another choice and that process is is also itself I would would argue is also art, but what what I'm what I was saying is slime mold. That was the that was the word I was trying to get at. Okay. This is like a question of slime mold. Is is, is a slime mold a plant, or is it an animal? Because it can sort of move. Like so, there's like a gradient here. You got interactive um, choose your own adventures in which your choices do have sort of an effect, but not really. Um, and then you have the game world where your choices have much, much more of an effect. You know, if you, you can, like, I, for example, to use an example, I played Planescape Torment once and I got one choice. Um, and I, I played it multiple, I played the game multiple times. I never got that choice again. I never got that consequence to that choice again. I couldn't figure out how I had got it the first time and I never saw it again. So there's a potential that you could play through and have a completely different experience, not just from somebody else who played through, but from the next, from yourself playing through again. So if you want, this would tie into your second uh, question, are some games more art than others? If we say that art, the game lies on a continuum of choice and consequence, then uh, one note on the continuum is the choose your own adventure books. And then another note on the continuum is this theoretical future game in which you never get the same consequence twice. Never. All right. Uh, do you want to just throw it out to the discussion? I don't even know if we had a proper debate. Can I, um, can I talk for a bit? Sure, I go think, ahead. I think I've got an angle you haven't gone for it um because we keep trying to figure out what is art and that might be a fruitless debate um it might be uh, be helpful to figure out what at least definitely isn't art yes i don't i don't that i don't think that means the opposite of art i don't think there is an opposite of art but there might be on non-overlapping magisteria there's something that has elements that necessarily does not mix with the corresponding elements of art and one answer but one possible answer is science like a singular statement can't be a scientific claim and simultaneously be an artistic expression because they each have rules that cancel each other out. So a good question is to what degree are games a science and how does that conflict with the ways in which they are art? Like a traditional sort of liberal art can, is or can be completely untethered from science if necessary. You can get blind, drunk, vomit onto a canvas and technically that's <laughs> art. And so, and so is the video you took of it. <laughs> as, as, as long as you decided to vomit onto that canvas on that moment for the sake of pure expression, that is technically art. Art can be something that contains no science at all, but an art can be something that contains science. I would say music necessarily contains maths. That, that, that sounds counterintuitive, but trust me, music necessarily involves mathematical patterns. That's the difference between noise and music. Music actually has some science in it. However, noise can indeed be art. See 
fucking John Cage and his infamous array of fine t- fine-tuned pretentiousness. He might call it music. Personally, I call it artistic noise. Getting blind, drunk, and vomiting onto a canvas is noise. It's art, but it's not fine art, because it doesn't involve science at all. The unusual thing about games is they necessarily involve science. There is no such thing as a video game with no science in it. Definitely. There's There's a deterministic system. Arguably, there is no such thing as the abstract liberal art version of a video game. They are necessarily fine art. And this is sort of why older generations, ironically, have trouble understanding it. Pe- people see their kids playing this stuff for hours on end and they can't see any tangible benefits from it. But you can't see any tangible benefits from a child constantly drawing the same vase over and over again if you don't consider those vase sketches a tangible reward. And if you don't consider the discipline and the hand-eye coordination the child is quietly developing... Parents have trouble seeing high scores and speed runs as a tangible reward because it doesn't resemble anything they or their parents or their grandparents considered noble. And what I may have accidentally done here is is married the non-overlapping magisteria of science and art. Bugger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Discuss. So... Your proposal is that everything that, or sorry, science and art can't occupy the same... Well, it was at first, but it appears games do that very thing. It's necessarily art and science at the same time. Given what you were just saying about how the mechanics itself is art, and what I was just saying about how the mechanics itself is science, it can't be... Yep. It has to be both at the same time. Maybe this is why this this debate's so hard. Well... there is a relationship between art and mathematics, not just musical, but, you know, if you think about the golden ratio, uh, which a lot of artists, uh, painters use, you know, when they make their visual art. Um, I think there is a, I think that the, I think the idea that um, science is the opposite of art may not actually work because a lot of what we were drawing from, you know, like when we talked about those cave paintings, um, and like the Venus of Wallendorf, that sculpture of the fertility goddess, uh, that was image magic and stuff that the you know prehistoric people made because they were trying to influence or affect their world. It was actually meant more as utility. Like when they would do the cave paintings, there's a lot of talk that it was about how to properly hunt these animals or what predators might be out here or what game you might be able to find, and not just because it was pretty. Um, and until we became more, uh, you know, comfortable in the Neolithic period, when we were building homes and we were, you know, uh, we could live in one place for more than a generation. Uh, we, we didn't, we, anything that we would consider to be art now was probably, I'm fairly certain it was just tools back then. Although our concept of what tools were was different. So I think that that relates to understanding the world, which relates to, uh, what science is about now. So I think there is a relationship between um, science and art. I don't think that uh, the, those two can exist apart from each other. And games is almost like where they really are closer together than they have been, you know, for many of these other things. But even like in painting, you know, like I, I do, I, I used to sell uh, paint and and people who were uh, professional oil painters and um, that used various types of mediums, they had to know how all those things were going to interact. People who were trying to create, uh, you know, paintings of of like like um, of, of figures, uh, they had to understand anatomy. You know, like if they wanted to be like Da Vinci was like an artist and he was a scientist. So I, I do think that there is a very closely tied relationship. So. Um, between those two things, this is the, this is where the the I think the contention comes from with people uh, in the SJW crowd that are intent on defining video game uh, creation as an art form and therefore something that has to be uplifted, much in the same way that other mediums are supposed to say something more important. So when you, you know, if you watch the SVU episode, um, the Law and Order one, you notice that the people who are interested in, you know, like the Amazon game are like these hipster 
characters with like trendy clothing and they look like they all own Mac computers and you know they wear like thick ring glasses and stuff because they're artists and then like the the dude bros that play like uh, Killer Be Slaughtered like these you know kind of like thick headed guys that you know, don't know what art is because they're playing a game that uses the same engine you know and so on you know um and that's 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 a a direct intention in creating a division between uh, what games are art and what games are not art, and that's because they're trying to say something that is art is therefore a better thing than something that is not, and they have to but they have to create this distinction, and and one of the problems with that is is that you're trying to say that something that is art is therefore by default more valuable or, um, you know, m more interesting or higher class or more elite than something that is not. And I would argue that both of that is, it's all art, but some of it might just be better than others. And yes, that might, I, I know that people don't oh, like the whole... Oh, you're being mean. No, no, no. Oh, you're being, <laughs> some art is better than others? Well, that's, oh. that's, well, you see, that's the thing, though. Like, this has to be said because... This this is sort of like bleeding over from stuff in the art community itself, which I have said, you know, in where I go to art school, there are people who don't, they, you know, they they want to uh, they want to define art as whatever it is for them, but they want everyone else to agree with them on it instead of just making it, putting it out there, and then allowing you know uh, the consumption of whatever the beholder is to decide if they like it or not that doesn't mean that they can decide whether it is art or not art but i think that to i think that it all can be but i just, i don't think that all art is therefore created equal and you end up in a uh, in an area where people are making art for other artists that's almost like what this whole uh, SJW San Francisco hug box is about they're making art games for each other, but they also really want you to accept it just as much as their the people in their little group is, and they create a distinction. They say, "Well, Call of Duty is crap, therefore it's not art because it's made every year." But you know, the Serpent is or Gone Home is because it has a specific narrative with a specific goal, and you know, it lines up with my predisposed beliefs. And I would argue. And yes, I know that I, I would, you know, I'm, I would say this. I would argue that they can both be art, but one of them, in the eyes of, in my opinion, is more successful as a game, you know, than the other. And then there, in in another case, it could also be that 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 same game that I thought was more successful as a game is also more successful as as art, too. And and that doesn't, again, it doesn't invalidate one, but um, that's what I think. I think that that it's all fine and but it just it, that doesn't necessarily mean it's all equal let's do this uh let's get uh, final thoughts from each person and then close it out does that sound okay yeah definitely yeah, that's good. okay so um if there's because you know i think ultimately the goal of the of this was just to try to get like have the discussion maybe get a better idea a better understanding of this topic uh, understand why this is an important topic and such a large one. Um, and you know, that we're not, we may not be meant to just sort of like have it all settled in two hours. So, um, Allison, do you have any final thoughts on the topic? Uh, final thoughts. Well, I guess my final thought will be my most contentious one. Only games are art. Social justice warriors are not art. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> um, so, well, no, I, they might they might be the closest thing to anti art. Uh, sour. My my basic point is this: um, it's it, I just found it odd, considering we want at least a lot of a lot of gamers want to be taken seriously for what they play and what they do and what they love. To call it art, to me personally, doesn't really affect it as much is what they're saying. But if we are going to call it art, don't just tell me it is because of the way it looks. Don't tell me it is because of the sound, the music, the, the, the story. Don't tell me it's because of that. If you take the position that games are art, do it the way Allison did, with explaining why the logical mechanics and the artistry within that 
makes it art because a lot of people haven't been doing that. And I don't know if a lot of people even care, to be honest, to take it to that next step, to cross that hurdle and make it very clear that games are art because X, Y, and Z. Doctor? Well, uh, a lot of people come into this uh, thinking, well, uh, art is a part of games, therefore games are art. But I hope you've come out of this discussion understanding that it's the other way around. <laughs> that you can't have art without games, because games are a part of art. Games are, in fact, a higher art form than art. Okay. Um, my belief is uh, games is art. That's I think that's hard to argue, but you can't just make the statement like Sauer said. You have to explain why. And, and I think Allison and uh, Mike made it uh, pretty clear as to why. This, that, I mean, not only is the creative process involved in making it, um, but, you know, it's, it's sort of like in the way that we interact with it, we often uh, become emotionally tied to it. And I actually think that that emotional tie to our art, to the game, is one of the reasons why we have gamers that are very, become very uh, aggressive in defending the idea that their game is art. Uh, it is all art, but that doesn't mean it's all equal. Uh, art is, you know, it can be shit and it can be art. And it can be great, too. And the, how you cross that boundary is by uh, how many people you can affect with it um, in, a, in a positive way. Allison, did you have like a final thought? Yes, I do. And this is, I think I understand how to explain what I was trying to say, that we actually judge the, the medium that games are within this idea that you, a game presents an experience for the user um, and is all about really the audience's experience is the is how we've judged art to be good throughout all of human history is that when art gets into the reeds of trying to control people rather than being an expression of of being human that's when it loses its its power as art and it ceases to become art so there's this this tension between using art to control people and using art to express a human truth and when we use art to express a human truth that usually means we are we are getting out of our own personal desires to control people or to to foist our point of view on them. But we get away from trying to foist our point of view. It could be either a political or moral point of view or a, uh, a personal point of view on something that we've experienced, although that's less fraught with problems. We, we get away from that desire to control our audience and actually respect our audience and their contribution to creating the art because – if we didn't respect our audience, we would never agree with them when they said, well, this this rendering of this horse looks like a brown splot of poo. you got to work on that. And then we go back and we say, oh, yeah, we better work on that, make that better. That's that's what makes the art better is, is opening ourselves up, up to the opinions of the audience. And I think that's all that games do is open themselves up to the opinions of the audience. They live and die by it. And to change that is just to take away what makes art. If you enjoyed the contents of this podcast, please consider supporting our show. You can become our patron at www.patreon.com slash honeybadgerradio. This show is made possible by the contributions of listeners such as yourself. Thank you for your donation.